Hey everyone. Okay. Hey everyone. So uh, my name is Tommy, and today I want to tell you about computer vision. So computer vision, uh, I've broken it down into three main parts. So first of all, object recognition. Um, and object recognition is it starts off with classification. So classification, it goes into a whole bunch of different technologies that we kind of take for granted nowadays. But uh, essentially, um, object recognition classification looks like this. So you get an image. And as you can see, it's, it's already gone through and outlined these, uh, these different figures. Um, and essentially uh, what it's doing is it's comparing what it sees uh, to a bunch of training data that it's already seen. So it's like recognized humans, it's highlighted them in green, highlighted animals in blue, different shades for the different types of animals. Uh, and the way this works is it actually has um, what most, uh, what's commonly referred to as a filter. Uh, and a filter is like this yellow box up there in the top left. And what it does is it sort of takes the values uh, of each individual pixel within that filter, uh, and then it sends that through a convolutional neural network. Um, because basically it just needs a way of converting this image into numbers uh, so that it can work with uh, the different nodes of the neural network. And then it goes through this entire image with that filter, uh, slides it along the image, and once it gets to the bottom, it'll actually change the size of the filter, play around with it a bit, look for different positions and scales of people, uh, and then once it's gone through that, it'll go uh, and, and outline what it's found. Um, so the primary application of this right now is autonomous vehicles. Um, so when you look at, um, there's tons of articles or whatever on, uh, what does a computer see or what does the car see when it's driving around? And this is what that looks like. Um, so it's got the boxes around uh, moving objects. So the cars are highlighted in yellow. Uh, it's noticed uh, some pedestrians on the side. It's got uh, some street signs over there. Um, and so that's like kind of like what everybody knows identification and classification for right now. Um, but a big thing that's changing right now uh, in, in object recognition is uh, biometrics. Because uh, with the new iPhone X release, uh, you can now unlock your phone with your face, which is pretty nuts. Um, so I like that was a lot sooner than I thought that was going to happen. Um, but what's even crazier is this company in China called Face Plus Plus. Um, so a show of hands, how many people have heard of Face Plus Plus before? Okay, one person. <laughs> so what Face Plus Plus is doing, they're basically disrupting like literally every industry uh, in China right now. Um, and essentially, what you can do with Face Plus Plus is technology. Uh, say you walk into a coffee shop, and before you get to the counter at that coffee shop. And you've already been scanned by four different cameras, uh, and it's already run your face against the database, identified who you are, it knows exactly what you want at that coffee shop, and it's paid for the coffee before you've even gotten to the counter. Um, so it's pretty wild what they're doing there. Um, you can also order like a car with it, like an Uber. Uh, you can get into your apartment with it. So essentially, uh, they're taking over pretty much every industry of biometrics. Um, the next part I want to talk about is SLAM vision. Uh, so SLAM stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. Uh, and so that's kind of a mouthful, so I've broken it down into three different parts. So first of all, mapping. Uh, mapping essentially means uh, creating a map of the environment that you're in. So back in the old days, before computers or anything, um, explorers would go around and find landmarks. Uh, so that maybe there's a mountain over there to the west. And then they would find where these landmarks are in relation to each other. And by, with that, they could create a sort of map that would represent uh, where things are and how to get to those places. And so that's kind of how mapping techniques work today. So as you can see here, there's a, a robotic vacuum, called, it's the Roomba. And it's driving around kind of aimlessly right now because it doesn't really know where the walls are. It doesn't know where any landmarks are. Uh, but what it's doing is when it hits that wall, it goes, OK, here's a landmark, here's a wall and then it drives somewhere else, hits another wall. And now it knows where the walls are relative to each other, and it's generated this map. It's got an understanding of what the area looks like. Then you get into localization, and localization is um, finding where you are within that map. Um, so now it's got this map, and as you can see on the, on the right side there, it's got a lot more organization in its, in its motion. Uh, so it knows where it's going, it knows the places that it has to cover, and it knows exactly how to get there. Um, and it's using those landmarks that it identified when it created the map to figure out where it is based on those landmarks that it's seen. The difficult part about this is when you try to do these two things at the same time. Because when you have a map of an area and you know that the landmarks look like um, 
but you don't know where you are, it's easy to kind of look at, okay, there's a landmark over there, there's a landmark over there, uh, so I know that I must be right here. And if I know where I am, but I don't know what the area looks like, I can usually sort of piece together some different things based on my location relative to those things. But if I don't know either of those things, then I don't know uh, what I'm looking at and I don't know where I am. So what SLAM does is it sort of takes the, uh, this is often used in robotics, so it takes the robot's point of view and it uses um, the different landmarks that it's seeing and compares that to create a, uh, it dynamically creates a map as it's moving through the space. Uh, and so one common application of this nowadays is augmented reality. Um, so here's a video of, uh, this should play automatically, I hope. Anyway, um, here's a sort of image of uh, so slam in action in augmented reality. And what it's doing here is it's identified a bunch of landmarks on this desk. Um, landmarks slightly different than what you think of when you think of maybe a mountain on a map or something. But it's identified, okay, well, there's a surface here. Uh, and if it finds a viable surface, then it could uh, anchor maybe a particular object to that surface. surface. Um, so what it's doing here is it's actually identified um, some different red objects, and those are actually uh, objects that have been scanned in just by the camera moving around those objects, and it's created like a wireframe mesh of, uh, to represent where those things are in 3D space. And then the localization aspect of that is, when you move the camera around, it keeps the right, it keeps the correct perspective um, for those uh, objects. So this brings me nicely into augmented reality. Uh, there's three types of augmented reality that I'm going to talk about. First of all, superimposition based. Um, this is essentially, uh, it doesn't have much to do with SLAM, but what it's doing here is it's identifying a few different key points and then overlaying something on top of that. So a good example of that would be something like Snapchat. Uh, so, here's a subpar selfie I took the other day um, using a Snapchat filter, and essentially it's, it's identified a few key points on my face. Um, so, for example, it's using the eyes, the mouth, and with that it can figure out uh, where the ears should be, where the, where the nose should be, and uh, when I create a distance, a greater distance between uh, the eyes and the, and the eyebrows, that's when it knows I've raised my eyebrows and when it should stick out the tongue. Um, so that's what superimposition AR looks like. Then geospatial AR uh, is pretty self-explanatory. It just changes what you're seeing based on your geograph geographical location. Um, so something like that would be maybe you're um, walking around downtown in a place you haven't been before and you want to find a coffee shop. So you just start pointing this camera around and you can see, okay, there's a coffee shop right there. Um, and so that's just based on where you are in the world. And so another example of that might be like Pokemon Go, um, which is a pretty explosive mobile game uh, recently, and it used geospatial AR to uh, create different uh, models within the world based on where you were. Uh, and the final one is mixed reality. So mixed reality is what they're doing with Microsoft HoloLens right now. So I'm sure many of you heard of the HoloLens, and essentially HoloLens, um, is doing things with SLAM technology to do things like play Minecraft in your living room. Um, so when you do that, it's scanning in um, different surfaces and it's creating viable surfaces um, that it knows it can place objects on. So once it finds those surfaces, it'll place down the objects and identify it as an anchor uh, or a landmark for those objects. Um, and so finally, I want to talk about kind of where this is all going in the, in the next 10 to 20 years. Uh, so when I was a kid, I watched a lot of, uh, a lot of superhero movies. And when I, my favorite ones were probably uh, the Iron Man series, uh, because it was kind of like what I dreamed about the future. Um, this was like the naive me that didn't really know much about the future at the time, but I just loved the fact that Iron Man never sat down at a computer. Um, he wouldn't open up Autodesk or Photoshop or anything. He would sit down or even stand up and walk around his room and start building this new suit just by waving his arms around. Um, and so this is sort of where it's headed with um, new design technologies. So this can not only be used in like architecture and stuff, but also in things like education. Why try to draw a 3D cube on a 2D blackboard when you can just show a student a hologram of a 3D cube? So the other thing would be uh, in medicine. So 
um, one of the craziest things that's, uh, that's going on in object recognition right now is that um, we're finding that computers are better at recognizing things, including people's faces, than we are. Um, so why do a surgery, uh, and when you have to identify something within the body, when the computer is actually better at you than doing the surgery? Um, so as you can see here, it's identified, uh, this is where you should make the incision, uh, and that would be far more accurate than what any of us could do just looking at uh, a human body. Um, and finally, extended reality. I actually took this slide directly out of a Qualcomm presentation deck because this is what one of the biggest mobile computing companies is saying is the future of augmented reality and computer vision. Um, extended reality is kind of one of those sort of buzzword terms, but it's essentially the convergence of all of these technologies uh, into one uh, cohesive experience. So here's the application of um, uh, emergency response. So this is a, this is a firefighter's perspective. Uh, they're going through a building and they can see on the right side is a map um, and that would be geospatial augmented reality. And then on the left side, you can see it's identified uh, a, an overheating door, uh, so there's a spot that they should be uh, worried about. And then on the, in the top right, they've actually got, it's kind of difficult to see, but um, that is an overlay of, uh, of a rear camera on the headset to see what's behind them, if there's anything, anybody in danger. Um, and so essentially, this is where extended reality is headed, it is just combining all of these technologies to create a better experience overall. Um, and the last thing I want to leave you with is um, this picture right here. Because uh, while I talked about some of these cool technologies and stuff in computer vision, um, I really want you to take away uh, the magnitude of the changes that are about to happen in the next 5 to 20 years. So here's what it looks like right now in terms of human progress over time. And what's about to happen is this. <laughs> so when you look at this, you should be excited and you should be absolutely terrified uh, of what's about to explode uh, in the next 5 to 15 years uh, as all this stuff starts to converge and create um, technology that we never could have imagined before. Thank you.